Good morning, everyone. It's a bit of a chilly morning, but yesterday was so incredibly bright, it just sort of makes January almost livable. And just so you know, I added up, we have seven weeks to go before the first day of spring. So we're into single digits, so I'm very, very happy about that. Um, first of all, welcome, whether you're here in person, it's so wonderful to see you all, whether you're uh, joining us via Zoom, or for those of you who watch the, the um, church service later in the week on YouTube, we are so happy that you have joined us and know that your presence, however you choose to join us, truly, truly enriches our church family. Um, we're going to start with the life and work of the church. John, do you want to come up and do yours first, and then I'll do the other couple announcements? So our first announcement will be from our fearless leader, John McPaul. Thank, thank you, Sheila. Um, my first announcement uh, is on behalf of the uh, Leadership Council that a number of you may have seen that we were planning to have a, um, our annual uh, con general meeting, our AGM congregational meeting. We normally, heard that, we normally have that at the beginning of February. Um, because of the COVID situation, then we would like to move that to March the 6th. So I'm just giving you a heads up, saying that we're going to push it back a bit. We're doing it so that we can have more people come to the meeting, that by March we think we'll be further along in this current cycle, and that will be, uh, uh, make, it'll make people feel more comfortable about coming out to the uh, uh, meeting. We'll hold an abbreviated general meeting. It'll be held after the service. So we won't, use our, we won't do our usual thing of having lunch and then having the meeting. It'll be a quick, uh, essentially a business meeting. Now I have another announcement uh, from the nominations committee that um, earlier in uh, January, Bob Hahn asked that his name not be put forward as treasurer. Back in 2019, Bob actually wrote a letter of resignation effective December the 31st, uh, 2019. Because of circumstances such as COVID, uh, Bob has repeatedly agreed to stay on. Um, at this point, he said, that's it, I've had enough. I really need to step back from this. He's done it for 14 years. And so we're scrambling in order to find a treasurer. What Bob did was to suggest that we take our uh, treasurer position and split it up so that we would have a bookkeeping role and, and uh, uh, we have uh, introduced that role that um, Arlene Roberts, our office administrator, will fulfill the role of bookkeeper. So she has been training on QuickBooks, Bob has been giving her instruction, and the plan is that she would take over the uh, management of our books. Bob also trans uh, transferred most of the uh, payroll administration uh, duties to M&P. So we've taken as much out of this treasurer role as we can. There are still pieces of it that are left, it's an important role, and uh, if there's anyone that would be interested in uh, uh, talking about it, uh, if you can help us out, then the nominations committee would be more than happy to hear from you. You can contact me by email, by phone, speak to me uh, if you have an interest. The treasurer has to be a member of the church and uh, you do not have to have accounting credentials per se. If you have a love of numbers and like fooling around with figures, spreadsheets, then uh, and, and have some business background, that would be an asset. So if you can help us out, please contact us. And our hope is that we will have a plan in place before the uh, March 6th general meeting. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, one last announcement, unless somebody else has something out there, is once again have the uh, container at the back for 519 Pursuit. So lovely socks like this would be a wonderful thing to bring and add if you can. Uh, please be aware that there are an awful lot of people out there who are just barely surviving and this bitter cold has definitely made their situation much more tenuous. So anything you can help with would be greatly appreciated. And now we've got it kind of mixed around a little bit. I'm going to do the Indigenous land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land of the Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the Attawandaran peoples and other members of the Iroquois Nation and the Neutral Nation whose traditional lands we are gathered upon today. May God keep us mindful of the covenants that have been made and broken with the Indigenous peoples. And now I'm going to do the lighting of the Christ candle, so bear with me because Fire and I don't always do well together. We light the Christ candle to remind us that when we gather together, and it didn't light, I told you. So sorry, people. Okay. I think it's so far down. There we go. We light the Christ candle to remind us that when we gather together, Christ is with us. This flame is a symbol of the light of Christ which shines in each of us. And now, if you are able to rise, please do so. And join me in the responsive call to worship. Offer God your worship and your praise. Offer Christ your love and your devotion. Offer the Spirit your gratitude and your thanksgiving. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We will offer God our worship and our praise. Amen.
join me in our opening prayer. Holy One, wrap us in the arms of your love, for we need to feel your healing touch. As we gather to worship this day, humble our hearts, teach us patience, and touch us with kindness. Open our eyes that we may see ourselves as you see us. Open our hearts to our, your spirit of gentleness, that our words may be true and our love may be pure. Bind us in a love that does not fail or fade, that we may bear all things, believe all things, and hope all things in your love, which never ends. Amen. Good morning. Okay, hopefully, there we go, perfect. Good morning to all of our families and our children watching at home and all of the kids here, both big and little. This, this week, I've been thinking a lot about communications. I've had some really good conversations with friends of mine, and I was thinking about all of the different ways I communicate with them. Some of them I text, some people I call, some people I email, sometimes I meet on Zoom. All of these different modes of communication and different people prefer different ways of communicating. Some of my friends will never respond to texts, ever. Other people only like Facebook Messenger. But somehow I'm able to learn how to communicate with each person and how to reach everybody. And in our church, it's a lot like that. We have people in this congregation who engage on social media and connect with us that way. We have people in this church who like personal phone calls and hearing from people. We have people who read the newsletter in their email every single week. We have people that join us in person. All of these different ways of communicating with us. And I think it's important that we think about all of them and use all of them. So my challenge to all of you, big, little, kids, adults, is to communicate with somebody this, way, this week that you may not have reached out to recently. Find somebody in your life, give them a phone call, send them a text, send them an email, However you communicate with them, that is my challenge for you this week. Good morning. The, reading, the first reading today is Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, O oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I, say, I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations, over kingdoms. I pluck you, <coughs> excuse me, and to pull down, to destroy, and to overthrow, to build, and to plant. And the second reading is Luke 4, 21 to 30. <coughs> Excuse me. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless, you will quote me this proverb. Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the, in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine 
over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zerephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them were cleansed except Nerim in Syria. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. For the word of God in scripture among us and within us, thanks be to God. Amen.
Good morning. I just want to welcome you all to this service this morning and to welcome all those who are watching at home through Zoom and welcome you present here in the church this morning. Now, there's something that I forgot. I forgot to check that box to see if there are messages. Can someone check if there are some messages for me, please, for gratitude? Now, friends... This is the last day of February. Oh, jeez. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. This is the last day of January. And this last day of January came with evasions. Two days ago, it was minus 22, and I said to myself, what are you doing, Ontario? Why do you want to return me to Alberta? Please. But today is minus 14, it's better. It teaches us that we're in Canada. This is wonderful. This is also January. January has a couple of things that has happened. One of the things that has happened for me, though, Betty White is gone. You know, Betty White made me so laugh so hard. She was a real comedian and an actress. Another person who has passed on is a Buddhist monk. Now, I've been trying to memorize this name and pronounce it correctly, but I can't. Tich, Tich Na something. Yeah. I used to listen to his tapes and listen to his teachings and meditate with him for years, I can remember. And I watched the procession of his funeral and I thought to myself, wow, this is something. But again, this January month, it's a month where Europe is commemorating the Holocaust. For those who don't remember the Holocaust, six million Jews were killed in Germany. And this January, they are commemorating that. And I also know that we have survivors of the Holocaust in this country. We have survivors of the Holocaust in this town, maybe, in this city of ours. What I want us to do this morning is just to spend just one minute of silence just to remember those who have passed before us. And I want to say a prayer before I begin. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for all the things you have done for us. We thank you for life and we thank you for protecting us. We thank you for walking with us in this pandemic. Holy One, we thank you for the person of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to this world to bring us peace and hope and love. Holy One, we thank you, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that guides us and helps us. So this morning as we meet in this worship service, we ask you to be present with us to open our hearts and our minds 
so we can understand your teaching. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, some time ago, it might be six months, I saw a Walt Disney movie on television. It was a wonderful movie titled Ruby Bridges. It was a story of a Ruby Bridges, a six-year-old African-American girl who was the first person to integrate the schools in New Orleans. Every day, the federal marshals escorted her into the schoolhouse because both sides of the sidewalk would be lined with people who were screaming threats. Robert Coles, a noted Harvard psychiatrist, volunteered his time to work with this young Ruby. Every day he would talk with her trying to help her weather this crisis. But on the news one night, he noticed her walking up the sidewalk and the people were screaming and throwing things. But suddenly she stopped and said something and started backing down the sidewalk. Then the marshals picked her up and took her into a building. That night, Cole asked her what she said to the marshals. And Ruby said, I was not talking to the marshals. And Cole said, yes. You were. I saw you on the news. I saw your lips moving. Were you talking to the marshals? Ruby said, I was not talking to the marshals. Then Cole said, well, what were you doing? She said, I was praying for those people who were hollering at me. I had forgotten to pray and I was trying to go back and pray for them as I walked to the school building. Cole shook his head and said, you were praying for the people who were screaming at you Ruby said, yes, my mama taught me that when people speak mean to you, you pray for them. Just like Jesus prayed for people who spoke mean of him. And then the little girl said, you see, when you have Jesus in your heart, You just can't hurt, hate anybody. This is what the little girl said. When you have Jesus in your heart, you can't hate anybody. So my friends, this morning, Linda read for us some scripture from Luke from Jeremiah, from Luke, she read that when Jesus, remember last Sunday, it was a Sunday where Jesus defined his mission. 
this Sunday we continue with that mission. When he finished reading from Isaiah, Jesus said, today, the scripture is fulfilled. And he sat down. Today, the scripture is fulfilled. And he sat down. And people were waiting for an interpretation of what he has read. But you see, friends, in the interpretation, Jesus included Isaiah and included all other people who were not Jewish, included all the Gentiles in his interpretation. And friends, Jesus was talking to his friends and his neighbors. He was talking to his friends and neighbors. And Jesus was saying to them, remember in the olden days, Elijah included Gentiles. And that did not sit well with his neighbors and his friends. These are people who knew him, who grew up with him, who saw him. And they got mad. They got mad and angry. Not only that, and they wanted to push him over the cliff. They wanted to destroy him. The reason for doing that is because they believed that as Jewish people, they are selected and they are very special. And in the kingdom of God, no Gentiles can be allowed. This is what they believed. But this is what, what Jesus did not believe. They believe because they are special, because they are very important to God, because they have covenants with God that no Gentile can be allowed. Now, friends, you've heard me speak this all the time. This is what Jesus does all the time. Jesus opens this door for every person to come in. Jesus sets up the table and welcomes every person. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, who your parents are, Jesus just opens the doors and sets the table for all of us to be welcomed. But this morning, they got angry. They got upset. And they pushed him because they wanted to destroy him. Friends, this morning, I just want to say to you, when you reject Jesus and his message, Jesus' friends and neighbors were rejecting the ministry of compassion. This morning, before I came to church, I kind of went and checked the dictionary for the word compassion. What does compassion mean? Compassion means suffering together. It means suffering together. So when they rejected Jesus, 
They rejected that message of suffering together, of feeling the pain together, of crying together, of standing together, of worshiping together. Matthew speaks about Jesus and compassion all the time. When you read the book of Matthew, you'll see in that book, you'll notice that when Jesus sees the lepers, Matthew adds the word, he had compassion on them. This is what he says. When Jesus sees the sick, friends, he has compassion on them. So Jesus is teaching us to have compassion, to suffer with others. And when they rejected him, they rejected that ministry of compassion. Because the ministry of compassion is to restore us to health, to wholeness, both spiritually and physically. This is what Jesus did all the time. This is what Jesus all did all the time. This is why, friends, I like Jesus because he does the same thing all the time. He doesn't flip-flop. The second thing that I want to share with you is that when you reject Jesus, you reject the ministry of kindness, kindness, being kind to other people, kindness. Let me tell you a little story about my mother, about kindness. It's kind of weird, though. In 2011, she died. She was 93 years old. But you see, my mother has struggled in her life. She was a domestic worker working for Mrs. Simpson, who was Australian in the 50s. But you see, Mrs. Simpson said to her, Emily, that's my mother's name, Emily, you know you can make it. Why don't you go and train as a school teacher? I'll pay for you. And this lady paid for my mother to go to school. And my mother completed a teacher's education. And she started teaching. I want to share with you the kindness of my mother. It was very, really weird. Because as a school teacher, she looked at all the children in the class. Children who had no food. Children who did not eat breakfast. Children who had no uniform. And my mother took upon herself to buy uniform for those children. And you know what she did, which made me mad, and bring all those children to our home, 10 to 15 kids. And I would be cooking for these kids. That was her kindness. Worse still, she taught me and Caroline how to do it. So Caroline and I, in our homes, as ministers, we had these children come from the villages who had no parents and showed some kindness. Friends, this morning, if we reject Jesus, we reject the minister of kindness. I went to Google and I looked at London and I typed organizations that need kindness and compassion. Oh my Lord, 
you try it. You'll be amazed how many organizations need our help. How many organizations need us to do something? John Howard Society. Volunteering in the hospitals. And some of these things we do as Wesley Knox, we do these things. We support the food bank so that people should not go hungry. We do these things. We support hospitals. We have people in this church who volunteer in hospitals and nursing homes. So this morning I'm saying to you, keep on doing the, what you're doing because this is what Christ wants us to do, to be kind to one another. When last did you send a card to someone who has not been in church for a number of years and you've not seen that person? And send a little cut and a little note and saying, we miss you. We're thinking of you. That's a sign of kindness. This is what Christ wants us to do. Wesley Knox, this is what Christ wants us to do. To show some kindness. Let's show some kindness to one another. Remember what he said to us? Love one another as I've loved you. Take care for one another. If you realize that your neighbor is struggling with health issues, help that person. Be there for them. Support them and welcome them. And the last thing that I want to share with you is When we re reject Christ, then we're rejecting godly expectations. What are the expectations? What do we expect? What do people expect of Jesus? You see, the Jewish nation during Jesus' time expected big things. They expected the Messiah to come in a horse and to conquer the Romans. But you see, God doesn't work that way. God sent a little baby in the manger who came to be the Prince of Peace. The expectations were wrong. For you this morning, what are your expectations? What do you expect of Christ? I have some four things that I want to read quickly and stop. During the tough times of our lives, because in our lives we have tough times. All of us have tough times. All of us have rough times. In those times, we expect that Christ will walk with us and give us strength and encouragement. This is what we expect as Christians. We expect that Christ will provide an opportunity for us to draw upon the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. We expect that Jesus will extend a helping hand. And lastly, my friends, I am expecting that when I die with my frailty and weaknesses, because I'm not perfect, you see. You see, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Ask Caroline. But I'm expecting when I die, I will be forgiven and I'll go to heaven and be with him. So my friends, this morning, keep on the compassion that you have. Keep on the kindness that you display. 
and keep on expecting that Christ will be there for us whatever happens to us. This is my plea for you this morning. Please, do not reject Jesus. Accept Jesus in your hearts as a friend. Just accept Jesus as a friend and a companion to walk with you in your struggles, in your pain. Don't ask the questions that a lot of people ask. Where is God? There's so much war. The Russians are in Ukraine. What's going on? Where is God? There's so many people who are ill. Where is God when we're struggling with this pandemic? My friends, this morning I just want to say to you, God is there for us all the time. And God is supporting us all the time. Remember, he gave us Emmanuel. God with us. In life, in death, in life beyond death. We're not alone, friends. God is with us. Amen. This is the time for us to share our gratitudes. The little note I have this morning says, thankful for my work community and church family. And I looked at the word gratitude and I realized that gratitude is an emotion emotion of happiness. 
And I remember saying to this congregation when I first came to this church and I was brand new. Now I'm not brand new. At least I'm six weeks. Begin a gratitude journal. Find a little notebook and write in that journal all the things that we are thankful for. Thankful for the person who loves you and cares for you. This is what I'm asking you to do this morning. Develop a gratitude journal. And you'll see after you have three books full of thanks, you won't like me anymore because you'll have to buy more books. So this morning, let us invite our ushers to bring us our offering. Please let us rise as we bless the offering. Can we please stand, please? O oh God of loaves and fishes, of bread and of wine, we bring before you our diversity of gifts, knowing that they will be multiplied for the benefits of the many. O oh God of resurrection, who makes all things new, accept our offering to both give and receive, trusting that there is abundance in togetherness and generosity in you. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Let's continue with our prayers this morning. And as we begin our prayers, let us remember Doug McCabe, who is at the Victoria Hospital. And I was fortunate this week, I've been struggling to make a contact with him, struggling to ask for permission if I could visit dark at the hospital. But this Thursday, I was able to connect with Doug on the phone. And I said to him, Doug, you know, really, I really want to visit you at the hospital. He said, no, you will not visit me at the hospital. You are not allowed. I said, oh. And he said, even my children are not allowed in the hospital. But we had a conversation and we talked on the phone for about two, three minutes. And this is what Doug said to me to tell this congregation. Please pray for me for healing. So this morning, this is what we're going to do. Pray for Doug for healing. Creator, sometimes your words seem stern and offensive. But in Jesus, you assure us that every word which proceeds from your mouth is good. In Jesus, you are never failing love is flushed out for us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we can thank you for every word you speak to us. Help us to model, however imperfectly, your perfect love for your people. This morning, hear our prayers of your church in the world, particularly this week. This past week, it was week of Christian unity. We ask that you strengthen the churches, the different churches in our community, 
and make them a rock. We ask that you make all the churches in our community fill their mouths with praise. This morning, let Wesley Knox congregation overflow with words of praise to you and deeds of love towards others. Help us to be rich in patience and kindness and let everyone know we are Christians by Jesus' love which touches them through us. This morning we pray for our leaders and committees. We pray for all our children and all our youth and all our programs at Wesley Knox. We also pray for the leaders of the nations. Especially we pray for Trudeau and the cabinet to make better decisions. Let them heed your words and seek to do your will. Teach them to love justice. Make them to rejoice in truth and reject wrong. Help them to wield authority, knowing that they are accountable for you, the Lord of all nations. Give us ears to hear the cries of those afflicted by poverty, injustice, or violence. Give us the strength to help them. Holy One, we pray for all who suffer any kind of affliction. We pray for all those in our hearts. Be their rock, their strong deliverer, and their hope. Strengthen all who care for them and grant them the joy of salvation. This morning, Almighty, we pray for all the health practitioners who care for all the patients in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses. We thank you for the cleaners in the hospitals. We thank you for the wonderful work they do for us. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to be with them and strengthen them all the time. Lastly, we commend into your care loved ones who have passed on and are resting you. Comfort those whose grief runs deep. Help us to be gentle, patient, and kind to one another so we can draw whatever afflict, afflict us in our mortal life. Let our faith become sight, our hope become joy, and our love become our all in all. For these things, Creator, and for whoever else you desire for us in your wisdom and compassion, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and King. Amen.
May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the, on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.